Bias variance trade-off is a fundamental concept to machine learning, wherein the engineer attempts to limit both error due to bias and error due to variance. The big struggle in this endeavor being that bias and variance are inversely related. That is to say, as bias goes up, variance tends to go down, and as bias goes down, variance tends to go up. The idea is to find a sweet spot between the two wherein both bias and variance are relatively low. Bias is the difference between the predicted value and the actual value. For example, if I predicted a value to be 9, but the actual value was 6, I could say my bias error is 3. If I were performing a classification problem and classified 90% of the observations correctly, I could say that my bias error is 10% because I classified 10% of observations incorrectly. Hopefully you can see that bias error is related to the error metric you decide to use, whether it be mean squared error, R squared, accuracy, precision, or recall. Bias error measures the error for a set of data points. Variance is how similar your bias error remains from sample to sample. Consider a case where three random samples of 100 data points were taken and predictions were made for each sample. In one sample, 80 out of the 100 predictions were made correctly. In the second sample, 81 predictions were made correctly. And in the third sample, 80 predictions were again made correctly. We could say this model has low variance because each sample produces very similar bias errors. Now consider a different model, which also made predictions on three random samples of 100 data points. In sample 1, 78 predictions were correct. In sample 2, only 64 predictions were correct. And in sample 3, 88 predictions were correct. We could say this model suffers from high variance, as each sample produces very different bias errors. The goal of any machine learning model is to have low bias and low variance. But as mentioned, there is typically a trade-off between the two. Low bias, as seen in the top two targets, means your predictions are correct or aren't off by much. High bias, as seen in the bottom two targets, means your predictions are bad, they are consistently off the mark. Low variance, as seen in the two leftmost targets, means your predictions are always in the same general vicinity. Whether they are accurate or not, your predictions are consistent. High variance, as seen in the two rightmost targets, means your predictions are all over the place. Whether they are close to accurate or not, there will be little consistency in where you are missing. Now I'll explain how underfitting and overfitting correspond to bias and variance. The image on the left shows an underfit model. This is a model with high bias error. What this means is the model is not sophisticated enough and is making poor predictions because of it. However, there will be low variance because of the model's simplicity. The middle image is an appropriately fit model. It classifies most points correctly and does so with a relatively simple curve. Yes, it misclassifies two green X's. However, it is generally very accurate and simple enough to produce low variance. The image on the right is an overfit model. This is a model that was fit too closely to the data. It made sure to classify all of the training examples correctly. However, it neglects the more general trend and is too responsive to small changes in values. Ideally, how would you hope the model classifies any points that fall within the purple oval? As green X's or yellow circles? In my opinion, I would hope the model would classify them as yellow circles, even though I would end up misclassifying the two known points. Here's why. Green X's in this location don't fall in line within the greater trend, and these two data points could be a fluke in a sense. If you saw two more data points with the exact same values, they may actually correspond to yellow circles. But why could this be the case? Likely those two green X's are being caused by some other factor we haven't taken into account, and the two variables we are already looking at wouldn't explain this occurrence. Let's use a real world example. Say I wanted to predict who would win a basketball game between the Boston Celtics and the LA Lakers, and I look at two factors, the Celtics win percentage and the Lakers win percentage. Most of the time, if the Celtics have a high win percentage and the Lakers have a low win percentage, I can be confident the Celtics will win the game. But what can we conclude here? At this point, the Celtics have won 75% of their games and the Lakers have won 40% of their games. Yet, the Lakers still beat the Celtics in this specific case. Are we to say that every time the Celtics win 75% of their games and the Lakers win 40% of their games, that the Lakers should actually be predicted to win? No. More likely, we could say it was a fluke, or that there was some other factor that affected the outcome, such as the Celtics' best player was injured and did not play, 
Your data doesn't always tell the whole story. Sometimes there are explanatory features you are missing. Sometimes a data point might just be an anomaly, etc. This is why you want to avoid overfitting to the data you have. Now that you know what bias and variance are, how do we combat them? To lower bias, we can consider adding more variables, assuming the variables have predictive value. So instead of just looking at win percentages in the previous example, I could also look at which team is the home team and which teams are currently dealing with injuries. Another tactic we could use to reduce bias is to explore with more complex algorithms such as random forest or neural networks instead of, say, linear regression. If you have high variance, consider using a validation set in addition to a training and testing set. Additionally, you may consider removing outliers. With standardizing values, for example, you may consider putting a lower bound at negative 3 and an upper bound on the values at positive 3. Finally, look to regularization techniques such as lasso and ridge to penalize higher coefficient values in your model. There are many different ways to decrease bias and variance, so keep in mind these are not exhaustive lists, but they are a good place to start.